Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. All right, boys, we're back. Um, first off, we have to give our best wishes to our simple Jack. Uh, he's feeling not so simple. He's feeling pretty sick today, and he was supposed to be here. You know how much he lives for these these prem talks, but he's not here. Wags is not here either. It's just Sean, I, and Wags's alter ego, Ted Lasso. Welcome, boys. It's lead. Hey. It's lead Tasso. It's lead, lead Tasso. Tasso. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna we're Heavy gonna feet. start with. <laughs> We're going to start with you today, Wax, because this weekend, an unfortunate end to your first season. Wow. I'm assuming there's not, or is it still up for, uh, we'll talk. So Onianta um, lost. I got, I got sacked. If you want me to cut you off. I got Wags sacked. did not, you didn't get sacked. So, someone had to get fired early round exit. I said, put it on me, Burn. It's fine. And he sacked me. Is there any chance that you guys will get a um, at large bid? Uh, I I don't believe we don't lost in so. the semis against Plattsburgh our sophomore year. Sean, we still got one. Remember? Yeah, yeah, but oh, this we is were not like, yeah. this is the quarterfinal. Right? We lost to the first round to us. We go pretty bad. And penalties. How did the game go? Tough one. Do you want to yeah. get out there and save a couple penalties? Honestly, I want. Well, first of all, yes. Mm. Um, second of all. We we just we need a striker. We gotta we gotta go out and we gotta find two aces. Mm. I saw and... I saw Burns uh, post his press conference after, and he said, "For all our possession, we just couldn't score the goals after at the end of the day." Yeah, we end up playing our best winger. It'd be like the equivalent of if we took you and said, "All right, you gotta go play striker." Like you'd you'd still I'm be a, decent. I'm a dope false nine. <laughs> no, not even false. Like holding true striker. Oh no, I'd be miserable. Yeah. It, it Give me a little nudge tough. in the back. I'm flying. Yeah, that's pretty much the equivalent of what our our fetchy started doing at the end of the season. I mean, he's class, but mm. it's just tough. Mm. Um, I don't know. Let's we'll see. let's talk things learned from the first but, season. Then yeah. this is your first yeah. time coaching. Um, you said you took a liking to it. I think the guys liked you. I think Burn liked having you there. So, I mean, what did you learn? Like, what you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses as a coach, and what can we uh, look forward to round two next year? Uh, yeah, I, listen, I hope there's round two. Okay. Oh, we'll Someone's see if you get. get we'll fired. see if you get the extension. <laughs> the contract extension. No, he, yeah. He told me I'm, I'm coming back. I believe the words were. No, you're a godsend. The guys love you. And then I, that's all I, that's all I need. What the hell is well, that? Was that Scottish? Well, that's a gosh. That's yeah. a round of applause for me. Yeah. Um, or in the long-term contract. No, I'd say top strength is, uh, well, look, I was a star at other places. And then at Oneana, mm -hmm. I became a bench player. Mm -hmm. And so I think my strength is keeping the, you know, 12 through 22 guys, you know, into it. Okay. Um, yeah. I think. I mean, that's I, a good. That's a good perspective. I think Burn learned that quickly. Like that, I had a good rapport with the, you know, the bench. Yeah. And um, I guess if I had to say one more strength, it's that whichever kid it was. We. I mean, kids are weird, man. They're eighteen to twenty-two years old. They all got an ego. Uh, I think I can talk to any one of them. Like even the one kid that um, he's a senior. And he seemed really tough to get through to. Uh, mm. Kind of my Roy Kent, in all honesty. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what I'll say, Wags, too, is like when you were in, when we were there at Oni, at Oneonta together, I felt like you were one of like the one person who was friends or at least a, some level of friends with every single person on the team. And mm. like, you know, I wasn't like there were some guys that, you know, I'm cool with, but I feel like you established a rapport with like, Every single one. I won't name names, but like you know who I'm talking about. There's one get... that's in your head. We... Yeah, I know it's exactly. <laughs> we'll say it later. But like, yeah, but I think that's a great thing to to, to bring into coaching. I mean, yeah. Who says it? It's um Nagelsmann says like coaching is 20% tactics and 80% like emotional intelligence and knowing what you know your players need. I feel like yeah. 
That's a good role for you, Max. I think it was a big thing with like how I treated kids that I would train at the gym. Mm -hmm. It was just a a step up. Like I Mm -hmm. told you guys, I think first week I was like, oh, sweet. I don't have to filter myself anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I can just, I can just be full. You feel like you had to filter yourself at the gym? Uh, you gotta just, I mean, you talk, some of the kids are 12, 13, 14 years old. Okay. Like, right. so that's just a different level of maturity where you can't walk up to a 14 mm-hmm. year old and say some mm-hmm. stuff. Whereas, you know, the junior, you can say pretty much whatever you want. You think it was easier right. just because it was like, these are all, you know, pretty signified like athletes in a college environment that's and it. they're yeah, all yeah, working yeah. towards a goal. You found that easier to work with. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the one thing I think with, with uh, if you want to parlay that into my weakness is I just I do. don't, I don't think that, you know, one to 26 or whatever, whoever, I, I don't think I got them going enough as, as far as like, you know, I started off just trying to be friends with everybody or get them to like me. That's always goal okay. one, you know, rapport, mm-hmm. client rapport. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I think weakness is that, you know, some of these guys no longer take you serious at a certain point that they're, they're kids. They're, some of them have mm-hmm. their own ego and then you mm-hmm. get push comes to shove. Like we get in a playoff game and it's like, no, I'm, I'm not joking or being nice to you anymore. I'm being serious. Like now yeah. I'm okay, yeah. what you don't want to hear. Yeah. So, now, do you, do you feel like built over time, like a couple years, you know, mm-hmm. do you feel like that's also comes down to, I mean, you said you really like your first goal was to have people to like you. Do you feel like that's kind of like, like, do you regret how you approached everyone and made your first impressions? You know what no, I mean? Or do you feel no, like this is, will just take time to kind of solidify yourself as someone who can be the lending hand, but also like, you got to take me fucking seriously. Yeah, I didn't. But again, like in my eyes, flipping the switch to being a psycho in a quarterfinal against Oswego isn't quite, you know, it wasn't. What, what is, that's what, not is where that, that level is. That's not is like that, my level is being a psycho in like the elite eight, not in the quarterfinal. Okay, season. yeah, yeah, yeah. When people I are guess like, for me, all right, just, this makes sense. For me, it just didn't get too serious yet. But then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, shit, yeah. we're at, we're mm-hmm. in right. Like, mm-hmm. okay, too late. Right. So I don't know, and you know, Burn too. He doesn't, he doesn't really get the guy like he gets him going but it's usually just calm and collected it's not really mm-hmm. yeah but there's a there's always he always does a little speech time. yeah right? still in the beginning he gets wild which like you participate in the bounce this year no and they bounce. do still they still do that i forgot they about do that. still do the bounce are. they do still play dink oh they're always going to play and it's still called yeah, the tensor cup good. right uh yes and okay. the bounce is world class. I don't think my ACL was ever ready for the bounce. Yeah, that's we made, true. We had made the tournament. Uh, one of the seniors said that I could join the bounce. I didn't ask, but I expected to be invited. Do you have a new? Do you have a newfound appreciation for Burn and like as a like a head coach, just kind of being around? That's it. Like, do you just see it from a different perspective now? Yeah, and um, the first couple games, not the first couple games, not really, because like we were winning. So it didn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I did get back into remember, like, I don't know what game it was. It was one of the tournament games. He sat Riv, you know, pulled out Riv. Doesn't he doesn't say anything when he sits you. He just expects for those who does for those who doesn't know who don't know, Riv is like one of the baller left wings who was kind of a solidified yeah. member and so so star, he has his horses. Say that, yeah. He has his horses and he pulls them. And that's just his coaching style. I was quickly reminded that, you know, mm. they're pulled. Go go find yourself for 10 minutes and then I'll talk to you. So that 10 minute window, I have to, I was really good at dealing with, you know, right. whoever whoever got subbed out. But I had forgotten that. I had forgotten that he did that. And it's just his coaching style. And mm. it was something I I don't know if I forgot. I just like I wasn't ever in that exact scenario. So it was kind right. of that makes sense. Is there something uh, that, that you know, this is your first season coaching? Is there something – because you personal training and coaching in a team environment is much different. Is there something that maybe you learned about yourself as a coach that you didn't think about beforehand? Like to be, see the game from the sidelines in that perspective? Uh, no, I learned what I already knew is that I, <laughs> I am a psychopath. Like I am a, tink- I am a tinkerer. 
I would come home and watch the game film while I played FIFA or like just sat here and just like, I mean, I had guys when we were in college, I would creep out every single team we ever played for a penalty shootout. Like, right. Sorry. So if anything, I realize that I'm still a psychopath. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're just committed. I, I keep you're it committed. well behind closed doors. You know, I like to, I like that stuff. I've played FIFA my whole life. I like that weird research edge that you can do. So it's your passion. Yeah. It's, not, it's not. It's a good thing. Um, the one moment that I can say that that's true is it was an early game, and no, no one knew me yet. Like it was like the third or fourth game. We were playing UMass Boston, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And. I come in to the locker room and I'm like, hey, this kid's good. You know, I creeped him all last night, watched, watched every game he's ever played for about five hours. I was like, Hannah, he's going to toe poke and try to slide it under you. Sure enough, two minutes in, this kid gets on a break and he just hits this quick little toe poke. And Hannah just makes the save and gives me a thumbs up. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm here. <laughs> we back. Where is this a Ronaldo celebration yeah, on the side? It, it was a psycho like moment for me of like, geez. And then I did also feel bad. Like I did not creep Ospigo's penalty shooters, not even a little bit. I did not expect ever to go into a shootout. And then I, I guess, I, I'm I guess a learning home. experience there. Uh, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And I'm just Always like, be yeah. prepared. I mean, yeah. also, yeah. At, I think at, at any level, like, I mean, the guys can watch something too. Like, yeah. keepers right. can watch that too. But I, I guess that's just a lesson that no matter what, you got to always be prepared. And right. I am done with shootouts. That's the last thing we'll talk about my coaching. I'm, I'm done. Oh, for God, those, it still doesn't get any For those of you that don't know, there's been a, a journey of a ladder of, like, and, you know, you when you get pegged down, you think redemption's coming. I'm still Not waiting. Again. I'm still There'll be one redemption. Waiting. You know, you might get knocked down like even two Win. or three more times, but there might be <laughs> another one. Well, it looks like Wags is oh. the very beginning of your coaching career, so. Uh, I hope. It's a lot of fun. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna keep up with you on 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 here with yeah. that, and we do apologize for our our non oni one like non Oneonta people because there was a a lot of name drops in there, but I think we uh, we learned a, a new side of Wagsy that I think everyone's yeah, gonna appreciate. Next, next yeah. up is Wags is on the recruiting trail, so look out. Ooh, oh yeah, okay. this is gonna be a that's gonna be a great yeah. series. Yeah, yeah if, you're striker, series. if you're a striker, if you're a striker, you better have five, five star week for otherwise you're not even. I assume I assume that you're just gonna bring you know your expertise in the betting world straight into the recruiting world and you know kind of Brentford, the same way. Brentford of Division Three. It's Brentford of Division Three. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. <laughs> um, to transition here, Sean and I both uh, ninety minute games this ninety minutes performances this weekend. Uh, big wins for us both. Um, I think we're in sixth and you're in eighth, but yeah, you know, we're only two two points ahead of you or something like this. It's a very tight yeah. in the middle. And we have uh, one game less, so it's it's very, oh, you very have, close. You have one game in hand than us? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, there you have it. And we're all trying and to make the you, uh, the top five. And again? Do you guys – is there another day? did already. Now we've already played twice. One, one. So we're done, so. Ah. Yep. Yeah. I know. Tough one. Uh, we were saying, we wish we played one more time. Like, yeah. uh, I guess that's it until until next year if we're still in the – opposition teams but uh besides our little updates with ourselves wagsy jack we'll we'll learn about fatherhood on another episode um <laughs> we're going into um premier league talk we're how many months in now two months in too many international yeah. breaks if you ask me a um, lot of be time. More games a lot, a of, lot time. of time left if you a lot of time a lot of things have happened since our predictions episode yeah you're right a lot of time a lot of things have happened. I'm going to start off and, and pat myself on the back, naming the first manager to get sacked. And wait, it was the Wofford manager with the X. Yeah, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Yeah, no, his name's not there. <laughs> Who knows? Not there. I can't. I have no idea. Not it's fair. not there. It's like it was never there, and then he left, and it, there yeah. was no reason to learn yeah, it anymore. I don't even know who that guy is. I'm trying to think of some other predictions we had, though. I, mean, I think predictions, I mean, in um, terms of bottom of the table, we've all been pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, all been pretty I accurate. Know. I think Burnley, we were wrong. I, Jack had leads. I think we were wrong. Norwich is significantly worse. Worse than, than we thought? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good shout. <laughs> this is true. 
They, uh, they're, they're, they're they bad. Scored man. three goals. Tremendously bad. So they have, wow, three goals yeah, and twenty-five are. against. Two it's, points. And, and, and Two Chelsea times. has twenty-six goals, four and three against. Hey man, so. if anyone can bring them back, it's Josh Sargent, baby. No, he no. no he's not. He was on my fantasy team for one week, and he got the quick X, only because I, I knew he was going to play. Oh, so do you know the new Pulse coach? I know the you assistant know the, coach. You know the assistant. Okay, yeah, Scotty. Well, that, Shout that, out to the Scotty. The head coach is is wired at all times throughout the day. Yeah. Okay. And I I watched a bit of the Norwich Chelsea game with him. I was lifting in the hotel, you know, trying to mm. get back. And they are so bad. Like I've never actually Norwich. watched. I've never actually watched the Norwich game. But you know, you drink a can of pre workout and you watch a first half. They are. How stressed were you about about to throw something like weights <laughs> against the just, wall? Like it's just so bad. It's not even. I don't get it. Like does possibly relegate them in January. Give Bournemouth some free games up. I have a question for you guys. Then, then does Daniel Fark make it the entire season, regardless? They three days ago they just like the weird thing with him. Right? They, they just said they want... su- publicly supported him. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. I mean, I feel like they they didn't invest. For the Premier League, anyway. So, did they ever think they were not going to get relegated? They never do. I mean, they made a few signings, right? But the year before they did, but they also sold some key guys. So, I don't, I mean, they, I mean yeah, they sold Buendia and then didn't even Buendia really... was the player of the championship last year. What they buy, yeah. Sergeant? They sold them. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, <laughs> but yeah, sorry, Sergeant. But, um, I mean, yeah, Norwich, we all had. Did anyone have Newcastle? I think we just said they were going to flirt. Do you guys think that they stay down there in that three? Or no, I think they're going to spend nah. so much money. They're, yeah, they're you think in the winter they spend money spend in the time. winter? Well, yeah. they at least get two or three. You know, like how much they can get enough they spend to stay though, with financial fair play? I don't know. I think it's that even. I don't think I don't think they can buy ten players. Like no, people I think all it, thought that was going to happen. Like that's that can't no, happen. No, 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 no. And FIFA fair play is kind of like the offsides rule for me. I don't understand it. Yeah, it's but, it's the handball uh, rule this year too. It's like I think it's like once you spend, you then have a three year period to make it up. I don't know. This is a Kyle Baker question. He would okay. You know, yeah, but, we'll have to outsource. I don't to think him it's on. immediate because I think with Wolves, like we spent and spent and then we mm-hmm. just didn't make enough in the three year cycle because of okay. League. So I think okay, I see spent. what you mean. I don't know. They'll be but they'll you guys, be fine. You guys think they're fine. fine. You think they – all right, I want to stay on Newcastle for a second there because the takeover was crazy. Um, First off, you guys ever seen The Dissident? Mm -hmm. You ever seen um, Icarus by by Brian Fogel? So it's the same director, and he did one about there is a Saudi journalist who was kind of being like a critic of the uh, Saudi Arabian government. And – the whole thing is about like his killing, which was like huge news. I can't remember what year this was a few years back, but he was like killed um, going into um, like a government, like a Saudi government uh, office in Turkey or something like this. Oh, wait, you and did tell me about this. It's crazy. I mean, if you can find it, watch it. And yeah, what the, like the part of the ownership group that takes over is this huge conglomerate of Saudi Arabian money. And at the head of it is Mm -hmm. the prince, Mohammed bin bin Salman. Mm -hmm. Mohammed bin Salman. Yeah, so, I mean, he has, like, besides, I know there's a lot of teams that you can point to with, you know, kind of sketchy oil money, maybe some things Mm -hmm. like this, you know. But this guy kind of, I mean, like kills and tortures journalists and there's a, a very long list of you know possible human rights offenses and things like this i just i mean is this good for the prem or, it's like, or can we, we or can we not we have we're to judge it, we're getting into that i'm just asking oh, we won't stand, spend too long on it but like <laughs> i know like do we do we have to judge everyone pretty you know not harshly, but strictly then, because for me, like, I get it. That's a, it's a club that's historic and there's a lot of money getting pumped into them. And how can I be critical of them when there's a lot of Qatarian money that's going into city and Russian money that's going into Chelsea. And, you know, there's things that are shady in these practices too, but like, 
I don't know. I just, I don't like it to be honest. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah. I mean, I can't say I'm so informed on it, but mm. yeah, I can't say I'm super informed. I am a I... little more informed on the, uh, so like with Schalke and the Russian oil companies, like I think it was you that told me about it, how they, they buy up a town basically. And then they, I don't think I told you about it, but I've heard about this too. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm a little more informed of that. And to be honest, uh, business, like, I don't think it's that bad. I mean, it's mm. not great environmentally, mm. but I mean, environmentally. These, are massive, these, these are massive clubs and they need to be funded. And Newcastle mm. was on the brink of becoming like a horrible club. So I don't think I mean, they've been, I mean, if I've, you're just being I've, direct and not looking at every other factor. I don't, it's a great mm-hmm. thing. I mean, I felt for the fans and that's why I wasn't, you know, I understand why this is I mean, a happy a good, time. A good, what, four, five, six years ago, like probably when we were in college, Newcastle was a vibe. That French oh, movement. Straight vibe. Like, yeah. So if it, they get back to that. Yeah, Historic club. I get it. Yeah. So then who, who can they sign? I mean, who do they sign this winter? I, mean, this is, <laughs> I got a list. <laughs> give me a list because I, I saw a video where they were just like, what one player from each team, who can they sign? And like, I would just like to you guys to just kind of rattle off some names. I mean, things that come to mind for me, just to butter you guys up, like an Ox, you know, an Alex Oxley Chamberlain, like guys that aren't, that are good and just not getting starts mm-hmm. as much. So, I mean, Wags, I want to hear you rattle some off. Give me I think, well, I think their biggest issue, and this is exactly what they're going to do, and it's going to mm. be terrible, is they're going to invest in the Oxes and who else is out there? Maybe the John McGinn's. I don't know, the guys that are already at their peak, like the ones that, that can't improve at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And but they're not going to be crazy high price tags, too. Yeah, yeah. They're going to slap these 15 mil, 20 mil buys out there, and they'll be decent. But mm. if they really want to be like, you know, city and the big clubs, then they need to get their youth going and like buy younger players. But at first, yeah, they'll definitely splash for older names. Um, Keep them in, especially of, if you guys think that like they, they're going to have to, they need that experience. I bet you they go right back. Did they uh, name a, who's the manager or are they still in shopping for that? They're still shopping. I mean, there's an yeah. interim manager right now. I think it's going to depend still shopping on for who full-time. comes in as manager and then you're going to see a movement like that demographic like to their country or you know right right so that that, if the portuguese manager comes in again what's his name then wolves are screwed is that yeah just gonna be them and wolves (laughs) the the pipeline is coming to newcastle yeah i I think i think they bring in a lot of a lot of players outside the prem though okay but they also have to bring in i I think they will bring in Um, a few big names i think when all them comes back wasn't he a newcastle boy at one point he was a newcastle boy and yeah. I, mean, I heard rumors on that because he did yeah, play a great he played on PSG. friday but he um he hasn't played as much so could be a shout for there does does harry kane go to newcastle no, <laughs> not even. harry kane's not gonna be able to run in two years sean oh wait did one of us make a prediction about Harry Kane? I don't remember. Well, we'll transition into Spurs now. So um, <laughs> we'll give Wags his flowers on that. We'll see how the rest of the season comes on. You know, this Harry guy Kane stinks. Man, he but you stinks. know, Harry Kane, man, it could be a month where he scores eight goals. Like this has stinks. happened before. But right now, I'm even talking to Spurs fans, and it's like, it just looks like he doesn't want to be there. It, well, and it just looks slow. Like, like, I know that Harry Kane is slow, but he looks slower. Like he looks not, you know, get on your toes, Harry. What are you doing? Do you think Do you think the system is partly to blame, too? Do you think Nuno Don't is partly to blame? Don't put it No, I'm Nuno. serious. Although I'm serious. That was part of my prediction is that he's going to kill Harry Kane, yes. So Okay. Sean, anything to add on Spurs? Dude, I, was just, I don't have anything to add. I was just correct. No, yeah, I mean, you were correct. You were 100% correct <laughs> for this part of the season. He's we will see how bag it a trick next weekend. He probably will, honestly. Uh, I mean, he still scores in England, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I think you have one of those, those holdout deal things. It doesn't seem to ever work well, especially when you wind up staying yeah. at the club. Yeah. And it got stretched out. It, it, it got stretched out a little too long as well. 
like mm-hmm. the primer was already beginning and he wasn't in the be- on the bench. So, and then so he's give playing me guys, in give whatever, me, that conference Sean, league. Sean, give me your two-year prediction for Harry Kane. Where is he in the next two years? Is he Harry? still in Spurs or is real he? Harry? Yeah, what it, or what, yeah. what is this? What he's is this? Withering injuries? away on Spurs and 12th in the table. That's my prediction. I mean, but also, if you're Daniel Levy, are you kicking yourself that you didn't take 170 mil? A million percent. Actually, it's Daniel Levy, so he's probably not. But he must be. Yeah, I guess that doesn't money doesn't matter. But yeah, you think right? He's Mm. not going to get that value back Mm. unless he he makes a real turn and Mm -hmm. goes back to prime Harry Kane. I don't know what's worse: the PSG with Mbappe, because Mbappe going to leave on a free. Or could you have cashed in what 130 mil on a sloth? Like, who made the worst deal? I never understood that PSG and how they came out publicly about that. Like, he that like, didn't sell him. Do they just assume, or they just think he's going to sign like another, like a three-year deal again? I or mean, is it uh, like, or is it these owners don't care about like, oh, we don't care if we sell him for free, you know? Or we don't care if we don't get 130 mil. Like, does that come into it? Because I think it has, that has to do with the financial fair play. But in different leagues, there's different rules. True. Yeah, I mean, that's the team that's been all in on the Champions League since they were, you know, bought from, from that group. You so, would think so, that right. money, 150 mil, or what, wasn't the price tag like 200 mil? It was crazy. I think, well, they pay, what did they pay from? They paid 175 to, to Monaco? Yeah. And but I think they wanted that, more than that. They said spend it would be yeah. crazy for your, your squad. Right. I wonder how much like the analytics of, of the views that they're getting and stuff like that. But I, I would still assume if Mbappe left with Messi and Neymar, there's, I mean, it's not like Mbappe leaves this year. PSG isn't getting the same focus in my opinion, you know? So like, I don't know if you right. can say like, shirt sales and tv deals like are they making more money from him staying another year i just feel like they're just rich guys that are like you know fuck it we're not gonna let's get see what happens by when, Real Madrid. when pochettino has to pick three three of these guys <laughs> i mean he he's got a tough job he's still I mean, figuring it out i'll be very honest with you and and tuchel said this uh, a few weeks ago that managing chelsea is much easier than managing psg and it, it makes sense because as a manager, you kind of want to have like total control. You kind of want to have control of how the team presses and if everyone works together. And it's just when kind you of like have anger. players like yeah. Messi, who is my GOAT, I'm just going to say, he's not pressing. He's not working like that like he used no. to. Like yeah. a young Messi yeah. at Barcelona was doing a lot of that shit, but he's not. Yeah. And so... It's like the same issue we'll get into later with Ronaldo. But when you have him and Neymar and Mbappe, and maybe Neymar and Mbappe can press a little bit, but they're not disciplined in the press. It's kind of like when they want to. The, yeah. Those three midfielders, man, like, God, that is one of the yeah. hardest jobs. Neymar doesn't press either. By. Neymar does not press. Now, sometimes he'll get into it and he'll get like, you know, kind of energized and sprint at people, but it's it's, it's about different the equivalent from, of how Obama Yang presses for a little. No, bit. or how a Bayern presses and how it's like yeah. a team is pressing, right. and you, they have one guy who initiates the press. Like, I think that's a tough team to manage. And I mean, do you guys think they have a, a shot at Champions League this year? They're gonna win. The so so far, so far, watching them play, they're like know. ten points clear in Farmers. They'll win, I don't that. Think they, They'll win that. They'll win that. The league, the league is not – they could win that just based on the talent they have on the team. But when you watch the league games, like the game the other day, they're so open. They're, they're, it's like they're playing, you know, defenders yeah. defend. And, and luckily, Marquinhos and Kempe are freaks, so they cover right. a lot of holes. In and the they have league. two so ridiculous goalies. Yeah. Um, I, guess, I, I guess the best teams in the world, I don't think – yeah, I mean, they did the same against Club Bruges too. It was just kind of like, holy shit! Like this. I mean, you when you watch other teams, like even the all these Prem teams, you're kind of like, oh, like people got shot. Maybe not United, but like you know, Chelsea, City, Liverpool again. Mm-hmm. Like they got shot. You look at them, they're like, holy shit, they're good. When I watch PSG, I'm like, they'll just have like a few moments, but against the team, like. 
I don't know. We'll see. They did. They did uh, get outplayed by Manchester City, and then they they beat them off of uh, mm-hmm. one chance, right. glorious chance for Messi. So I'm, that's gonna how that's how PSG is gonna have to win. They're not gonna dominate any games. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. There is a little bit of a scrap going on here. Yeah. We can see the reflection in yeah. your eyes. Move, turn your head a little so bit funny. so we can see. Yeah. Who's? Oh, okay. There we that's go. That's Declan. I want to. Um, I want to transition. There was a whole on... shoving match. I want to transition on. We'll go back a little bit to some managers. So I want from you guys um, to tell me, does Arteta deserve an apology from us yet? And then after that, tell me who's the ne- who's your next manager to get sacked. So, Wag, start us off. No, he does not deserve an apology. Okay. Why, why not? I, I did, because I we did were pretty some, harsh. We were pretty on. harsh on him. I did some research. We were very harsh on him. That's true. But – we also said, uh, I believe the last time we were on, or maybe it was I talked to Byrne in his office. So <laughs> okay. if you, either way, I mean, wherever I go, I, I, the pick, other. I pick on yeah. Arsenal. Um, we did say against Norwich and Burnley, like, you, those are must wins. Otherwise, you're gone. Okay, now they won both games 1-0, mm-hmm. squeaked it out. Mm-hmm. I watched both, looked like crap. Yeah. Okay, they did ball against Tottenham, but I give, I give no credit against Nuno. Nuno is a piece of work, in my opinion. And then, what about Leicester? Then, have, they been, have they been playing well? well yeah, but uh, not yet. They got to keep. How going. did they it's play only, against Leicester? Really, I didn't watch. It's the only game. really three games. They've only really played well for three games. They still played like crap against Crystal Palace and like crap against Brighton. So, seventeen points though. They're right there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not in on it yet. I'm not in. Three behind City. All right, Sean, what do you think? Um, wait, oh wait, sorry, sorry, my, Wags. Give us, give us your. Uh... My next to get sacked is. Yeah. It's, you got it's, any odds for us? It's, it's Nuno. He's gone. He's mm. it's too bad. You know, like, like he was just a he was just a tool in Levy's scheme. He's gone. He's gone. Mm. There's mm. no way he makes it. If they lose again, he's gone. And who do they bring in? Sean. <laughs> no, you know really? what I bring in? Nah, Eddie Howe. No <laughs> I don't know way. who they bring in because honestly, it's I, quite a character. It's been too long. Like, can we get Eddie Howe? I, mean, I they took the, the pass prem. at him. They took the pass at him in the preseason. He said he didn't like the project. So, yeah, I don't think I take the Tottenham job. I mean, I don't think like, so either. Seems horrible. I mean, you've got Howe's good players, though. Man. you got like, I mean, Wags is going to not say he's world class, but I mean, Harry Kane has proved that he's world class. This season has been tough, but I mean, you have him, you have Son. It's like, yeah, you have Dyer, but I mean, you still got some world class attackers. Oh, hey. I just feel like people don't want to take that job right now, though. You do not need to come at Eric Dyer like you just, like he wasn't even in the conversation. You just had to get that in, huh? Yeah, sometimes. All right, Sean. Um, the same question. England to you. International. Arteta apologies. It's Sean's turn now. Okay. Yeah. Arteta apologies, and then next manager to get sacked. I think it's too early to apologize to him, but at the same time, I mean they're in sixth place, tied, tied with Man U, and it, they haven't really performed to be in the top six. But and you have to say that. He has to have a has to, has to be a part of that about getting the team to get these wins. Whether even though they're only one nil against shit teams, um, you know maybe he 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 is a good manager, and the players are just not uh, in the right mindset or they're not focused, whatever it is. But they're yeah, they're three points off fourth place, mm-hmm. three points off City, mind you, mm-hmm. yeah. and third place as well. Third so. Yeah, I mean, he's, do, he's, he's doing something well there. I don't know if it's him, if it's the players. Um, but either way, they have results. And in terms of the next manager gets sacked, I'll be honest, before, before the match yesterday, I thought Sean Dyche was in trouble. Oh, but then, yeah. But they but loved then, their manager. They showed up. Yeah, but they showed up. Mm. Mm. First win of the season. World class, Burnley. Mm. Um, Still so he's three, safe, but yeah, <laughs> but he's safe. Burnley's safe. They're gonna be all right. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't want to say Nuno because Wag said that. I mean, what about Leicester? I feel like they're underachieving so far. Oh. Yeah, but I think Brendan Rodgers is the best Rogers, they're going to get. Yeah. They're going to the they're going to get. I mean, yeah. throw, I'll throw out its names for you. So maybe it could be Fark. Maybe it could be Ali. No. Um, maybe it could Ali, be... Uh, maybe. Ali bought another could couple Ali. They bought another couple but did. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the the Leicester's only, like, only got a one-year horrible. contract. There's like a horrible loss. Then, yeah, he's in trouble. Bielsa, Bielsa, I don't, I don't know enough it. about Leeds and about the way they feel about their manager. Uh, Wags, okay, I mean, he brought the them up. Him? He's a legend there. Yeah. He, he, so he, I feel like if they go down, he goes down with him. Yeah, Bielsa will leave. It's, honestly, they're in trouble if Bamford and those couple guys stay injured. I think they're in a lot of trouble. Big win today, though. Yeah. I mean, I think I mean Patrick no Vieira. How, at, how big? Patrick, <laughs> yeah. Patrick Vieira, Patrick Vieira yeah. is doing. I think he's doing great at Palace. Pal- to be Palace honest. big win, Palace big win. They're playing big win. well. He's and they the have man- a he's lot type of-, of manager, though. If they go six defeats in a row or something like this, you know, six games without a win, they have a draw or two. Mm-hmm. That's when those guys start to go on, like you know, start to get pressured. So that could happen, but I mean, I, I agree with I agree with yeah, but I think Wags, it's a project. I think yeah, I it's think a, it's a project. It's a- and I, but I don't. I think Ali bought himself doing... some time. Arteta, I think, is like I said in the big, in the first one, the predictions. I think he's there the whole time, the whole season at least. I'm so distracted by Keeley. Sorry, it's all right. I understand. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to agree with Wags either. But I feel like it's Nuno, Sean. I don't know. Yeah. Like I mean, yeah. they just don't feel like good. They don't look the bad. Good. Managers are safe for a little while. You don't really want to rumble. You know, ruffle. Too many feathers, but they're still. I mean, they're only club. in. Eight, they're only in eighth place. It's not like they're in fourteenth or fifteenth. Yeah, but a couple bad losses, and I think right. Isn't there no break for a while now? It's a, it's a little long. I hope so. Jesus Christ! But they're gonna go back to Europe in their little, you know, make believe <laughs> conference league. And if they don't, if they don't win, it's over. Like that's it's the Europa. It's the Europa make believe. <laughs> Europa yeah. Sunia. Like they're not qualifying right now. If they don't make it out of that group, are you kidding? He's got to go. Yeah. If they don't, yeah, if they don't get through the Europa Make a Wish Foundation, then they're, <laughs> they're done. Um, I want I'll put one thing on Arteta where I feel like I feel like they've really cleaned up the defense. If you look watch the first few games, yeah. I mean they looked up, up against Brentford the first game. I know that's different, but like yeah, I think I was a little too harsh on Ben White in the first episode. When I watched a few Arsenal games, I thought he was super strong. I think they're – it's a tough job for him, though, because he's building with a lot of young players. So you want to build, like, a philosophy and you want to build a nice way of playing. It's Arteta, of course. But you're the manager of Arsenal. You need results. So that's why I think they've kind of – it kind of happened last year, too. They start to come back a little bit. They start to be a little bit more compact, play on the counter a little bit. But now, I mean, they have players to open it up and have the possession. His, so I think his, we'll see a mix of it. His back line now is inexcusable, right? They're Gabriel's good. A, I think they're Gabriel's playing well. Beast. Gabriel's a beast. He's not horrid in possession. Ben White is that possession center back that Arteta probably wants. Tierney's young, and I'll call him good for now. Like, their back line is solid. So, like, he has mm-hmm. no more excuses. Who's at CDM there? Party and like he's got no more excuses. Party's played well roster, too. I know you were you were a critic of Party last year. Yeah, he's played but well. But the roster should be good enough for results now if everybody stays healthy. Like that they have eleven, some promising youth. They really yeah, do. Smith, Smith Rowe is like the throws a baller. Eleven, but he's a baller. Yeah. Like no more excuses for no results. Like also Ramsdale play Liverpool. I expect them to to play not to party. Dude, Ramsdale right. is a stud, man. Ramsdale is suddenly a stud. I thought he was trash last year. Relax. It's different when I guess you're playing at the different clubs. You kind of uh, something with the XG and the stats, like a keeper saves based on where the shots are. He's one of the best, actually. I was, I was correct. Interesting. On that by, Interesting. Uh, yeah. huh. Our stat guy, Kyle Baker. Our stat guy, Kyle Baker. Shout out yeah, to Kyle so. Baker. It's tight. It's. I mean, if you look at the standing, it's very tight at the top. We're still early. We're still early. It's I early. think it's early. I mean, yeah, we'll all see. that being said, for the next few games here, which I have for the last few games, 
I will be riding Arsenal. I have been riding them, and they are playing some ball. I'm riding them in fantasy right now. I have, you know, when you have the keeper and a center back like combo, you're thinking they're going to get clean sheets. So I've I've kind of thought yeah. that, but I Ar- I think they have Arsenal a tough game coming up, don't they? I don't know. Let's see. I feel like they play like a city or something soon. Maybe not right now. Now they play Watford. Uh, Who's uh, after uh, Watford? Liverpool. That's the way I was thinking of. So, I mean, that's a tough one to keep a clean sheet for sure. You might see my bench. Buzzing but... against Watford. Yeah, but, like, so that Liverpool game, I expect Arsenal to play with them. I don't want to see this mm. gross – remember, like, what was the FA Cup last year? No, I think they'll sit back. I think they will sit I... back against Liverpool. Let's Enough. see. Wags, I think they will, Enough. though. Enough. There's no – I mean, you have to be – I think sometimes you have to be a fool to try and match Liverpool in an open game. But they had that class. In an Other open like game, Liverpool is like – Liverpool will score but, six. It doesn't matter right. if they give up four. They will score six in an open game. That's why and the they have, don't like to do you it. Have, you, could play, you could play Obama, Yang, Smith, Rowe, and Saka and counter. You know? Or you could go back four, to the five four, back there. Or play four. Maybe. Yeah. So, anyways, our tent is supposed to be – Pep's understudy is supposed to be this great coach. I'm done with big games. I need at least 45% possession. I need them to play the game. It's a, like I don't enjoy watching a bombing sit up top and everybody else behind the ball. Arteta is supposed to be a good coach, and the players mm. are there now. So there's no more. I'll give you two things. With the position in the last Ugly. few games, and like if, if, I mean, there's he can start to afford to do these things a little bit, but I mean, he's also you're when you're managing at those clubs, you're under the pressure of getting the sack on a three game stretch. So, I mean, we've seen it in a lot of with a lot of coaches, but I also think you, the comparisons to Pep are different because Pep, like, I guess they did both splash, but I don't know. City already had like a lot of players there. Like City already had Aguero there. City already had Silva. They had company when they came in. So like mm-hmm. you have guys who've won the Premier League before. Yeah, Arsenal splashed out on like, you know, Odegaard and Partey I'm saying and some center backs that and stuff. Now. But I'm saying he has that roster now. Not quite to that standard. But you think Ben White is company? Is that what you're telling me? I'm saying they have a standard of players now, and they're healthy that they should be able to play. Enough of yeah, that. I mean, I mean Tyrone Mays and both, David Alaba too, right? Both their DMs are, are international studs. Like, shot, don't even hate on Shaka. He's supposed to be this great stud DM. Arteta stood up for him. I want to see real soccer. That's all. He does play well. He does. He plays better for Switzerland than he does for Arsenal. But he's out for a long time, isn't he? It's nearly the same jersey. Like they should be able to play with class. Okay. I mean, I I hear I what you're saying. Have phases in the game, but Liverpool right now, and I. I mean, Liverpool is Liverpool, and I think Salah at the moment is the best player in the world. Oh, Liverpool. Yeah. And if you try and play, let him one-on-one, he's going so to um, toast him. Do we underestimate Liverpool in our, pre, in our predictions episode, boys, Wags? Uh, I don't I, remember what I we said. I think that um, my – Do you correct, remember your top like, four? I don't remember it, but I think that within it. my prediction, I based it off of somebody getting hurt. And right now, not a single player has got, like, their health. I think that was two years ago. Listen, yeah, because all Klopp does is run these guys into the ground, okay? So it's a fair if point. one of them gets hurt, then we'll see if they keep up their form. But, yeah, they do have a couple injuries uh, in midfield right now, I think. But they do have a couple injury. injuries in midfield. But I so think is gone. to answer it's your question, Sean, I don't think any of us – Maybe besides Jack, I can't remember. But I don't think any of us had them in our top three. I think we all had them like kind of four. I said it was it was Man U, Man City, and then I had Liverpool. And yeah, Chelsea, I think like, I right think off. I think I might have. I had want a Chelsea. title. No, we all. I think we all had Chelsea, didn't we? Man, I think we had Chelsea, it could, Man it U. Could still City. be a title race. We were Wags hyping up Man U. I think Wags had. I, had Man I was Man also U. hyping them up. If they I stick with that five three two, U. baby, it's on. If they stick with that five three two, we're going up. Hey, when Conte is rumored to come into the club, you know, just be Conte and play a five back. Class from we were, So we were warming up. Or I think it was I was in the locker room when the when the lineups came out for Man U Tottenham. And you know, Sorry, I you guys lost against us. We go. Okay, why don't you relax? Anyways, 
I was like waiting for the lineup to come out and I got a notification and I was with one of the kids. I forget. I think it I will remain nameless. But all of a sudden I look at the lineup and I'm like, oh, they're in five backs. It's it's over. They're in five backs. Like, this is great. So I play the rest lineup. of the season. I show them the lineup. I walk out of the locker room as I'm going up the stairs, you know, all in on Man United. Check the phone after the game. Stick with five back, Oli. Stick with it. It's great. I think Phenomenal. they will. We'll come to, we'll come to Manchester Phenomenal. United because we have, I have a few questions for you guys, but I wanted Sean to kind of talk about Liverpool. I mean, let's talk about, did we underappreciate them? Do, the, do we see them as a legit title contender? Or do we see them as a legit Champions League contender? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're very good all over the pitch from the goalie to, to the front man, whether that's Yota playing in the number nine or Firmino. Salah is the best player in the world at the moment. James Milner and Hendo somehow get it done in the midfield every game. Uh, Kite has been good. Kate has also been good. Elliot yeah. was very good before he got injured. Curtis Jones is also playing really well. I feel like Klopp is very good at getting everyone when they get their chance to perform. Also, I think Tuchel at Chelsea is doing the same thing. And I think that's a sign of a very good manager. Yeah, I think there's a good balance of rotation in there. I think right. that's kind of healthy for teams because, one, it gives them – the bench players like the idea, okay, like I'll get a shot, you know. Whereas it's like, right. I know with some managers, yeah, and I'll just point Klopp's out, I'll be a this. good. Klopp's a good manager. He's got to be. Like he's got it. I, I think he's Bob, a great man manager. They want to fight for him. You see the hugs ago, after. When when did Bobby get that hat trick? I felt like Chompers hadn't played in a while, but he. Chompers. I mean, he probably he probably played the last couple games, but all of a sudden, Bobby Firmino just mm. clinical. He's playing. Right. But yeah. I think he, I think he manages the egos. He has to very well. Like I think so too. I think he. Ready. I think they also have like, they have egos, but they don't have that level of egos. Like I think yeah. you have Salah, who is a classic forward in the sense where you know he may be a bit selfish sometimes and not make that square pass or thing, things like this, but he also fucking gives everything, and I think right. all of the the players do. So I think. Those are good egos to have because you'll see right. Salah will create those goals and you just kind of have to deal with the fact that sometimes he may not make the extra pass. You know, he may just look for it himself, but yeah, they look good. I mean, the midfield. Yeah, they come back from wack- break well too. They come back from international breaks very well. They do. Yeah, they do. I mean, I, I can imagine that those sessions, the, the training sessions are crazy intense. And if you think I about think, the roster, they travel everywhere. Right. Yeah, that's right. true. I think, yeah, the midfield is the one question because there are have been a lot of injuries, but they do have a lot of midfielders too. So guys can come in like, I mean, it was only a draw against Brighton, but Oxley came in, I think he played 90 minutes or so. So some guys can come in and kind of do those. Curtis Jones has proven he can play against the best teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, Keita, yeah, that was a tough injury against Pogba, but I don't know how long he's out. He's looked good. Mm-hmm. Hendo still. I mean, you still have Fabinho. You have a lot. So you even have Minamino, who might not ever get sniffs unless it's <laughs> Preston and the yeah. uh, Carabao Cup. Great but, cup yeah. player. Great cup. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's transition on to Manchester United then, because it's been the talk for the last. I mean, the real season. The the, the spotlight has <laughs> been on. Ronaldo. Yeah. It's really been on them and Ronaldo. So. First off, let's talk about um, – I want to start with Sean. I want to start with what are the problems that you see in United and are you Ali in or Ali out? I don't want to be influenced it, why by this every... itching? He's like, why did you pick me first? I, I don't want to be influenced by, uh, by the, the boys at Sky Sports, but it seems like Man U – they're, they have had success in the past because of players and not because of the manager. Where I would say Chelsea right. and Man City and Liverpool have better players, but the manager has a very big influence on how they play because there's a system. The players know what they're doing. With Man what do you U, mean? Every other Can I, wait, I just want to – what do you mean by success? Do you mean like 
So I think since they, Fergie they pull, left, no. So so they'll they'll pull wins out. No, no, I'm talking about let's say in the last few since Ali took over. Okay. They get wins. They got wins last season, the end mm-hmm. of last season, because of Bruno Fernandez. Mm-hmm. They won games because of him. Mm-hmm. This year they're getting wins because That's of Ronaldo. It? Just just Bruno. Or they sometimes sometimes Pogba. <laughs> But I don't think I don't think with they have they have many good players, but I don't think that Ali's doing a great job of creating a system that works best for the players they have and then being consistent with it. Mm. He, he goes one le- one week he loses, he has a little bit of pressure, then he changes the system mm-hmm. with a few different players, and then they get a win. He's like, okay, we're gonna stick with that now. That doesn't mm-hmm. work, then they go to something else. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's that's top level Premier League Manchester United management. So do you think he's do you think he's the problem? Even if you, I mean, you don't think he'll get the axe, or do you think he'll get the axe? What what is like? Is it I, him I think, that stems from, or you think it's a combination? I think, I think he could be one of the problems, but I think sometimes like maybe it's just time for something new. Hmm. But but at the same time, other managers didn't get it right too. Mourinho didn't get it right there. It wasn't you know he's he a played top Flaney manager a lot too, <laughs> and. So who knows? Maybe there's something deeper in the club that's not right. Hmm. Or maybe they're still suffering that Gerard Ferguson left. <laughs> and they're never going to get over this until he's, you know, not around. I don't know. But it, it just seems like they are they're still pushing top four. Mm-hmm. They've looked treacherous games. Sometimes they get wins, but they've also looked terrible. Um and I'm not a Manchester United fan, but to see them as a club with all the players they have, I don't think it's good enough. Yeah. Do you think he stays the whole season then? No, I don't think he does. Okay. He doesn't miss, make it the whole season. I think they'll have a run of games right now. They'll get some wins. Then they're going to go on a losing streak. Maybe in the by December, Christmas time, when they're playing many games back to back to back. And then I think uh, Ollie's out. Could come with Champions League too. Like, um, yeah. you know, if they don't make it out of the group or they lose in the yeah. first round or something like this, this uh, that could be another tipping point. All right, Brian, you're itching over there. Give us, give us your thoughts. All things, Ale, and what are the problems? I, I muted. I muted just so I didn't, you know. I know you're it. itching there, man. Uh, I. The issue is, who is coming in? That's what these clubs don't like. Yes, manager wise all, yeah yes i think always part of the problem but i also think that it's it's been these same batch of players dare i admit pog was part of the problem but sure like it's been these it's been these same batch of players essentially in the same culture that is not the same so when you who are you going to possibly bring in that's going to completely 180 change that around where man you right the last what three years i think they can get on these crazy runs, right? Rashford in the Champions League, nine games undefeated, and then they lose to Watford. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't at know. At home too. At home too. It'll be something like that. Yeah, I think I do think that all is going to get the the short end of the stick, but like, it's also not his fault. Kind of like the old, you know, break up. It's it's not you, it's me. Like, mm-hmm. but <laughs> you're still dumped. That's all. I think that's yeah. the perfect way to describe it. Little, little yeah. high school heartbreak. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I think that there's another surge, another man you surge coming. I think they're going to stay with the five back because it was class. And uh, Tottenham had a few dangerous chances, right? But ultimately, most of it was sniffed out. That's what I didn't, I didn't watch. I saw the highlights. You just said it was maybe. class, and then you just said it was. You, you just <laughs> no, said you didn't like, watch. Like, man, you looked like the better team. That's what two of my friends told me. It's just okay. Sonny had a dangerous chance that he mm-hmm. probably could have done better with. But mm-hmm. if they take that five three two anywhere, you could take it in the Champions League, whatever. That back five in De Gea, that's going to be tough to concede a goal. And True. I mean, Tuchel makes a living off that. Chelsea is is playing ball now, but originally Tuchel made a living off that. So. I think that he'll stick with that, and it might keep him his job. Uh, but yeah, I think we live in an era. He's getting his heart broke. I agree. Okay, by the before the end of the season, you think? I think he's got. You think one it's Nuno more. first, and then Ali's close after? I I think it just depends on how big the run is up the table, right? Like I think mm-hmm. they're gonna make a charge, mm-hmm. but 
if they lose one game, sure, nobody's going to care. But then if, if that run comes back down into like a slide, because they always slide back down. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Uh, how are they in Champions League? They're, they're up, right? Because they came back and beat Atalanta. It's a tight group. It's just a very tight group yeah. right now. Three, so that, three games left win, now? Four games win left? Their three games game left. They'll win their next game there, ideally. They'll qualify. And then that'll give them a little more security. And then watch them go on like a four game run in the Prem. Mm-hmm. And the next thing we know, it's, you know, March. Yeah, I think they have Atalanta again. It's and happened like three I, times, this whole Ole Out thing. It's happened like yeah, three Yeah, I mean, times. it'll keep yeah. going. You'll see it yeah. throughout the entire year, I think, anytime that they don't win. But. And I think the biggest what? issue is, is there's not somebody waiting behind him to, to coach. I hear yeah. things so, about Conte, though, that he is, yeah, he likes the idea about, of. Uh, Coaching there. What's his name there? Van Gaal? Yeah. Van Gaal? What? Van Gaal? Oh, he was there. He was another coach when Oli was getting fired. They were going to bring him in. We've also heard Zidane claims. That's not real. That's never happening. I, I mean, <laughs> if, you're, if you come back from, from Real Madrid, like your hiatus from Real Madrid in those Champions League, you don't think Manchester United is like a is like a interesting project for someone like Zidane. It's Zizou. Like I mean, Manu's I got mean, a lot. Manu's got a lot of dead weight on the roster. Yeah, it's true. I mean, maybe you see him coach at Juventus next or something like this. But like, eventually Zidane will be back, and it's it's gonna have to be a club that's you know he, not too far down from Real Madrid. He, he, why would he? Mm-hmm. I don't know. What is he gonna go coach at Newcastle? I'm a big Ole Claude hey. and you Pogba hey. supporter. Enough money. Of project there. Money talks. Also, I want to ask you. I want to ask you one them. one one question with them because Wags, you had them winning, I believe, in our predictions episode. I think there's a surge coming. I'm not super concerned yet. So my my question for you, and I want a straight answer: Does United have a legitimate chance at the title still? Yes. Wow. Interesting. Because, Sean? And- Here's why, here's why, real quick. I thought so. Some of the teams are so bad in the Prem, right? They're so bad. Who's so bad? Rattle them off. Burnley, Norwich. Watford's pretty bad, although they got hey, a Hey, you are the one who Robert said it. Finch. We'll go yeah. lose to Watford. Yeah. Uh, did I say Burnley already? I want to say him again if I did. I don't <laughs> um, Leeds win not healthy is horrendous. Like, they're not that good. They beat Norwich today. I don't care. Like, so I think what's going to happen is the winter transfer window. Those teams are going to get better. They have to. Mm -hmm. They're just going to die. Like, any of those bottom teams, if you just choose to get a little better, you're probably safe because (coughs) the teams are that bad. Mm -hmm. So I think what's going to happen is some of those teams might start nicking off the Liverpools and the cities. And if Man U can give me this glorified 5-3-2, nine-game unbeaten run, they're right back in it. Interesting. Interesting enough. Um, we'll stick on United for just a little bit. I want to talk about the people who aren't getting a sniff. And we'll go to <laughs> Sean because Sean said that um, – I can't remember the exact wording of the category, but we're going to talk to, the bus we're gonna talk about oh, Jaden Sancho. Yeah. And I don't know if you if – you, because we've seen him both, and he's pretty well um, liked and appreciated here in Germany – Um, He played very well at Dortmund. I think he's, I mean, there was one campaign where he wasn't as great, but over the three, four year stretch, a lot of people thought he was their best attacker. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I mean, what do you, what do you think about, you think this, this kind of continues where he's riding the bench and what kind of system do you think he would actually flourish in at United? I don't know if it's a system. Or is he just not that guy? Is he just not that guy? He's just not that guy. Not that guy. It's like he, Kai, Kai, so last year Kai Havertz had a very difficult time in the Prem. Never, never got going. Went up scoring the Champions League final win. And now this year he's playing much better. But still, I don't think he's at his best. But Sancho, I think, but, but Chelsea didn't have a player like him, mind you. They didn't have mm-hmm. a player his type. They, Man, U, Man U has players like Sancho. San, Sancho was his own little thing, sure. Very tricky winger. But I mean, is he get, is he playing in front of Rashford ever? No. 
Maybe not under this man. I don't think he's arguably playing in front of Lingard, if we're being honest. And I just don't think I don't think that he I just don't think he fits in the team. Lingard's a wagon, Bill. Don't make that face. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's my just, opinion. I just, just don't know. If, I don't know if that's the team for him. Yeah, it's it's tough. I think with the amount of wingers they have, and now a healthy Rashford and a Greenwood who's had a, I think, a great start to the year. Right. With the up and coming um, Greenwood and not selling Lingard, spending nine that was wild. It was crazy business. Like it wasn't even a necessity if you were keeping. Yeah, the, so the, Sancho, the like, I mean, that was a hundred mil. They don't even I mean, we it. could say the same thing about Ronaldo, and we've talked about this, and we've talked about it with uh, your boy Jono. That could, I mean, Ronaldo was that a great signing for them? I mean, like, do you they think they needed that... a Ronaldo more than they needed a Sancho? I mean, I guess you always could need a Ronaldo, but right. Yeah, I guess, but also, it's also like... A sh- it's, it's a short-term play, though, with Ronaldo. Keep in mind, at the time when they bought Sancho, they didn't plan on selling Lingard for cheap. They still had Daniel James. Rashford was always going to come back healthy, and you're still weighing on Marshall's contract. Like, they didn't okay. need him. yeah. Am I forgetting another winger? Isn't there another? Greenwood, but... Greenwood, yeah. Like, why did you need a sixth winger? Hmm. Yeah, and now if they stick with this five yeah. back, I mean, <laughs> then there's really no wingers. place for them. There, it's going to be tough for these wingers to play. Yeah. I mean, they'll play. Looks like maybe two down. I mean, we'll see how that develops. And I mean, I don't think Cavani and Ronaldo. That's an aging front too. So I, I mean, <laughs> guys, they're going to find variations within this. I think, especially because Rashford is. Ali loves Rashford. I mean, you talk about it, Wags last year. With his injury, Ali was trying to run him into the ground. I mean, he loves Rashford. So yeah. Rashford's gonna play, you would mm-hmm. think. It's I it is crazy though to spend that much money on a, a guy like Sancho, and then we kind of I mean, how you guys say it is they didn't they didn't need him, but also like I I I do like does Ronaldo really make them that? He scored goals and he's yeah he's scored some important goals. Does he really make them? better like does he he yes. gives them more of a shot at the title and of a champions league in your opinion yes inserting 20 goals into your lineup gives you a better chance at winning a soccer game okay fair and enough but well, let's talk defensively then <laughs> because i mean i don't know if you've seen i'll send you guys some things there's um bad. there's this guy um ooh, i'm blanking on his name right now but he's a writer for the athletic um he's the author of the book zonal marking i believe something cox and he does these breakdowns of of tactics uh throughout the premier league and he was just talking about how easy it was you know like the lead up to the liverpool game and then the liverpool game he was talking about how easy it was for teams to break down united through the central centrally and then through through like the wide areas and he was saying a lot of it comes down to there was like one ronaldo is not really He's not pressing. He has, I think he's in the bottom two or three for most presses in the 90 minute span, like on average. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's like very low. And I mean, you, you would just, I understand this because of his age and what he can bring offensively in terms of if he gets one mm-hmm. sniff at goal. The guys, I mean, it's amazing. There's no doubting that. But they went through a breakdown of the Adela- Atlanta game and how easy it was for them to just slip balls through the middle. And then it's just, you know, unless uh, Bruno is really far back as a 10, unless they're kind of playing a three there, like, and he's deeper. They were just able to get through those and then just play it out wide and get it in like every time because the press from United, especially with Ronaldo, was breaking down. And he was saying it's like a dilemma that Ale has. And, yeah, I mean, he's going to give you 20 goals. Could you score those goals anyway, though, with like a Cavani and, you know, a, a Rashford and a Greenwood? You say no? No. Give me more. Come back. Come back at that. I Rashford mean, I'm, misses, I'm playing Rashford, devil's advocate here. Rashford misses half the chances that Ronaldo's dunked home this year. Or like, for instance, the positioning of it. What was it? Uh, who they, who they, Lingard, like, right? Lingard made that pass in or shot it at the keeper and then Ronaldo put it home. 
home or something or no in the first game you're talking about like his ability as a poacher and I forget the goal. The goal. but yeah i mean ronaldo inside the 18 is an absolute fox agreed like yeah agreed like the second ball he somehow always sniffs it out and he's waiting mm-hmm. uh, uh, no one else does that uh, it's gross on man united it drives me insane sure. watching them like Rashford yeah. does not do that unless it's this organized play Rashford is frozen like he's certainly he's certainly the king out. of finding goals when it's it, it is 100 percent a skill though because it's but just most anticipation of his, most of Rashford's goals are like these immaculate goals right they're, they're great goals or on a counter and he mm-hmm. just slips it past right. the keeper pace. things like yeah. this and pace Ronaldo yeah. is both a, a goal scorer of great goals and a great scorer of goals so like okay yeah I like that point I just I don't know I also you know nobody wants to give him credit but when you play a five three two you can have a striker that is meaningless on defense so it works a lot better now if you switch it to a five two three which is probably what he's going to end up doing because you want to put in Rashford you want to put in somebody on the right wing Greenwood Sancho and I have watched a five two three for years Raul works Ronaldo will ruin a five-two-three. He will ruin it. It'll be horrible. And Who else played five-two-three? England played five-two-three for a bit, didn't they? But the striker works. Like Harry Kane works defensively. But I mean, you could also play one where it's like it's kind of tucking in, kind of how Chelsea do, where if if Lukaku's there, yeah. sometimes if you play like a Mount and or a Pulisic and some things like this, they're kind of finding space mm-hmm. in between the two. If a Mount on but is that is that great for a Rashford? I think that's good for yeah. a Sancho, but. So, I don't know. I, it's got to stick with the five three two, and he's got to stay say wingers. I'm sorry, but if, there's no spot for you here. Yeah, because he's gonna play Bruno and he's gonna play Ronaldo, and that's the yeah, thing about Ronaldo is like it won't be Cavani. It'll be Greenwood is the is the correct sub there. Greenwood, a worker, but then it's like you know you're just gonna not play Rashford and Sancho. There's never gonna start. But then what is it? Is it McFred for the whole year? I mean, you got to play Pogba in a five back, like. That's you got to be kidding me if you can't play Pogba in five back. Yeah, I agree. Nick, Nick Fred is demonic in a five three two, like crazy, crazy. It's just that is so. I mean, I get it because Pogba couldn't play; he got the red. But like, yeah, that helped his decision making. You know how funny it is too. Like, not funny because it's super sad, but it's like the fact that Bruno comes out. And fucking Matic comes in. I mean, I know they were up a goal, but like Donnie can't even come in with Bruno's coming out. Donnie's done, man. Donnie the Wolves in the winter. Did you see that? Donnie the Wolves or Donnie the Newcastle? <laughs> Did you see it? No, Donnie the Wolves. No. It's a movie. Really? It's happening. Really? Donnie, Donnie the Wolves. Renato and I mean, Danny. I just want to see him play. Donnie just like, sucks. Top eight. Lingard, too. I mean, like, I'm a United fan and I like having Lingard here, but I also like West Ham and I think. I mean, I guess West Ham balled again today, so I guess it wasn't too heavy on them. But I just like seeing him more play. versatile than those other two, though, than Sancho and, yeah. and like Lingard can play defensively a little bit. I mean, he did. Yeah, he can play in that yeah. system. He did for West Ham. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, you guys have anything else to add? I think we covered like covered a lot of the main teams. We didn't talk too much about Man City. We could have talked about Grealish's calves and. I mean, Not much maybe his about. game is getting taken to the next level, but they need a forward, I think. Still, Jesus is playing right wing. That's an interesting setup, but, I mean, the city is going to be city. Yeah. Um, so we let's talked to Arsenal. We, we talked. We see the table. We see the quality at the bottom. Give me a shocker that slips into the relegation battle. At it first, slips it was into Arsenal the relegation was battle. Arsenal was a funny joke at first, but it probably wasn't realistic. Somebody that is either like in it and stays. Like I personally think that Leeds is gonna stay in that battle. I do. I mean it. I mean, if you talk to Jack, that's not so surprising. That was in his predictions. Um yeah. the thing is, is like with an Austin Villa, it's weird to me because I just think they have so much quality. But, but they it could happen where there's a stretch of games, and then you know, yeah. when you get in the when you get in a stretch of games where you're not winning, there's a lot of pressure starts to amount. It kind of can, you know, weigh on you. I mean, them, them in Southampton, I could see flirting down there. Everyone else, I yeah. think Wolves have surprised me with. I kind of like how they play this year. I think they've been good. They look good. They look. I good. think Leicester, like I, 
Leicester, how I predicted, I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be like 10th, 11th, 12th all year. I really don't think Leicester is putting together those performances. I don't think the guys that you could rely on, like a Madison or a Barnes a and things, I think the level is just a little lower. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think they'll slip into the relegation. I don't, I mean, Everton is, is terrible to watch right now with Rondon, but when they get guys back, I think, um, We'll see who they play tomorrow, but I don't think DCL is back yet. But I, no. but um, Richarlison is back, so they'll improve. Yeah, I mean, Sean, you tell yeah. me, but I think Southampton, Austin, Southampton, Austin, Southampton to Austin. me is is I think the one that I think I might have had them in the relegation or close think, to it. Seems a good. Well, seems a good coach though, doesn't he? Southampton he seems a good manager. Spells, they seem to like though, him. where they where they play really good ball. They go through yeah. these spells where they're, they're playing well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a couple of those teams can't even sit that's the other thing is how high is the bar going to be right what was it what was it last year 26 25 what was the number right 25 was the lowest Fulham was, yeah. Fulham was mm. trying to get to 25 mm. 26 i mm. think jack jack will know from Fulham. Mm. but mm. i think that bar i think that bar is going to be even lower the bar is going to be crazy mm. yeah could be um norwich just pack send it in norwich yeah. up or norwich down Bournemouth up. Watford, 10 points. You're doing enough right now. Watford doing enough. I mean, Ranieri's there, fine. too. Ranieri's yeah. there, too. So they they are like, we need to stay this year. That's what they that what that's what that hiring tells me. Yeah. It's like yeah. Ranieri is gonna is gonna weather the ship and they're gonna to... there, there's no way that they they become safe though, like early, you know, with months to go. I think they'll be there the entire year. They're I just can't believe in your They're not a good enough team. They have good some good players. Like we've talked to Sean loves Sar. Like Sar. they have some they have some really good players. They have some good um experience too. Ben Foster in that. They got Ben Foster. Like GK. GK. Just because you like GK, the yeah. GK. Wow. I can't believe in your outline you typed Arteta apologies question mark. No. It was no a apologies. question. There no was apologies. a question. Well, none. None. No. No none. question. All right. Well, boys, I mean that's it for me. And unless anyone wants to yeah. add something, I think uh no, it was, uh, it was a pleasure to speaking to Led. Yeah, I just want to. Yeah, yeah thanks, I wasn't Led. quite as angry as Led. Um, I do want to add on the on the coaching front. One thing that I struggled with this year is their team or any team, and this is going to be a little pet on the back for us. Any team, right, is not going to be our team. That was one of my bigger struggles. Like, I, our team was. 27 deep bro like zeph mm -hmm. could have ball right um, and i think that was the biggest struggle is is you look around and it's not your team so adjusting to it is a tricky trade for me so now i'm excited to recruit so i can kind of somewhat help build a team that i don't know i just that's right my mental right how much power do you have it how much power do you have in this or is it like if you i guess if you if you put something on burn and the head coach's desk well, I showed, him the center back. I showed him the center back. And, you know, if that center back happens to listen to this podcast, we looked, we love you. All right. <laughs> love so that. I told you it's a big green light for me, but same thing. I got to just tone down wags and kind of bite my lip on half the things I want to say, which is fine. I don't mind. It's, it's Do you think you have to kind line. of, you kind of have to find your footing as a, as a, not stern, but just kind of, find that area of where the you double can be sword. wags the fun guy but yeah. wags you listen to me like wags the i think that's a good that's a it's a difficult balance to find yeah. i really do especially as assistant coach your job is a little different there yeah. is there is this notion that you are i mean you're not the head coach so in a way you are always going to be looked at differently but it's finding the perks of the assistant coach where you can be the guy that reaches out but also you have to be the coach. So it's like, I think it's a tough balance, but we're rooting for you. Because Throughout the year, I got a couple more duties and stuff. So next year, set pieces are, are mine. And I, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Set pieces offensively, defensively. What are we talking here, both? All of it. Oh, he's all around. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have 10 indirect kicks for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Corners are short. Always. Always short. <laughs> oh, man. There's no there's no way to piss off a center back enough than playing a short uh, corner and the ball doesn't the ball come in. 
in the middle. Oh, that pisses win. off center back yeah. so much. Hey, Sean, we so little shout out to Sean here. We ran the Bayern Munchen, you know, back posts where you get paid. Uh-huh. Uh, Ooh, the, I, the swinger, was, the swinger with actually, uh, Muller. Yeah, I was actually being a little mean to our senior because um, I straight up told him to his face that he has not created any chances off set pieces and it needs to be better. And I'll tell you what, that kid started on the back post, Sean, and he darted to the near post, and we probably should have scored off one or two of them. Um, we had our center back, we had our center back to the back post with a header, and he just put it right at the keeper. But there was, oh yeah, it's a tough thing play. to defend when that when someone's swinging back, and whether you get a if flick, you have or you play somebody back that can post. whip. Yeah, if you have right. somebody that can whip the near post ball in, it was dangerous, and I'm excited to try to make it better. But yeah. that came from Vinberg. The player's yeah. name is Punky. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I almost scored yesterday on that. That same exact thing. Yeah. It was the so ring, funny. The ring around. See, it, see it it's very dangerous. Ra- raise his hand and say Donke. I'm just laughing in my head. Love that. <laughs> Love that. All right, boys. Well, this has been this has been all talk with uh, with Wagsy, and um, we'll be back. And the next time we come in, it's we're gonna come in hot. Something we'll come like back with Jack too. Like we'll, we'll come Jack back be with back Jack. Healthy. Yeah, hopefully. All of a you know. sudden, our, our warm regards to Jack. And his yeah, support. I mean, warm regards to Jack. Warm regards to Aguero. Crazy scare for him. He's got an irregular yeah. heartbeat or some shit. That was crazy. And yeah, uh, Wags, thanks for joining us again, man. We missed you. Um, we talk to you almost every day, but we missed you on the podcast. So, well, we're looking forward to the next time. Yeah. Next time Wags is back on the podcast, he's going to be a little more fit because I don't know if you saw Martin issued a challenge on social. Ooh. What's the challenge before we Ooh. go? Just name it, he's please. Just, he starts. He starts rowing for the first, and I hope Martin hears this and you can clip it. This guy starts rowing, you know, for the first time in years. We used to spend summers together. I used to smoke this guy on a concept too, just absolutely smoke. <laughs> and he comes at me post ACL. <laughs> You know, couple rows. This guy rows what three or four times in a two week span. Tags me in every post. He's dead. It's over. I'm the comeback has begun. The concept two is upstairs from the gym. It's coming downstairs. Martinez. Good. It's over so do you want to put a, a a great thing with goal setting is putting out a declaration so people hear this and there's an accountability to you. Do you want to throw yeah. something out there to everyone? Uh, yeah, and it's to the people, but it's also directly to, to Martin. Perfect. Um, let me do some quick math here in a second. Fifteen hundred, one thirty-three. Yeah, I'll be rolling fifteen hundred meters in four twenty-five in no time. All right. Okay. And Love that's that. that's my, my bar. It can only get better yep. from that. Yeah. When Martin hears that number, he's gonna go, "Yeah, I can't do that." Oof. That's what we like to hear. Okay. <laughs> I like we'll, this. we'll be we'll be looking out for this. I'm excited, <laughs> and um, tune back, and we'll we'll see if we'll see when Wags does this. It'll we'll make a post. Oh, it's getting moved downstairs right after we we stop. Fuck yeah, love, I love it. Glad to get Sean, an bring, after it. Bring us, bring us out, Sean. Yes. Until next time. Keep moving forward. Keep learning. Make your own path. There we go. Thank you, Led. <laughs> Thanks, Led. <laughs> okay. Footwork is sponsored by ourselves. Also, Kong Fitness and Merchant Designs, baby. Follow us on Instagram at Footwork underscore podcast twitter is at footwork podcast youtube and facebook just check out footwork podcast search it email us if you need anything any questions at footwork podcast at gmail.com and remember plug plug pass tell your parents amazon delivery guy mailman i don't know who just tell them like subscribe review all of it helps thank you